live from Santa Clara, California. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering NextWork 2015. Brought to you by Juniper Networks. Now your host, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, welcome back, everyone. You are watching the Cube, a special presentation for our flagship event where we go out to the events, extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angels, I'm my co host Stu Miniman, analyst at Wikibon.com on infrastructure, routing, networks. Our next guest is Luca Salvatore with, uh, with Digital Ocean, network engineering manager. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, it's good to be here. Um, love your company, you guys have been doing great stuff, and certainly on DevOps, enabling the kind of scale mm -hmm. that people want at a great price point, so congratulations. Thanks very much. You have a great company, you, uh, your, your founders in the past. Um, so I got to ask you, Juniper really has been around for a long time, obviously powering a lot of the networks. Uh, yep. the, they're, the, they're, in the, they're, the, they're the big whale in networking, but it's changing, right? So as a customer, you're here at the customer summit, do you like what you're hearing? I mean, I mean Juniper has to enable you to go faster, I do. be stronger, more agile, yeah. more security. Definitely. Talk about that, What's, what are you hearing? Yeah, it, it's great. The whole, um, the whole uh, announcements around Contrail and the new switching platforms um, I'm, I'm really interested in. Uh, the QFX 5200 is uh, is something that we've been a heavy user of the of the QFX 5100, um, and the 5200 seems like a, a pretty good step in the right direction. So I'm sure we'll evaluate that fairly heavily. Um, and the whole concept of this is is how software is starting to drive networking and becoming more and more prevalent uh, in in the network engineer's life. So it's it's an exciting time to be doing this type of stuff. We heard Jennifer Blatnick on earlier talking about kind of the guiding thesis of of the Juniper's strategy, and yep. it's all about automation, orchestration. Yep. That's cloud, right? That's, that's the future. You guys live that every day. <laughs> we <laughs> do. <laughs> what has to get done to make it go better? What are the things that you're working on? So we have just done a whole uh, automation, uh, automated deployment um, sort of revamp of the way we deploy our data centers. So being a company that's grown so quickly, we need a way to quickly deploy racks and whole data centers. So. Um, we've come up with a whole system using Juniper's zero touch provisioning, which now allows us to basically plug a switch in and it just builds itself. So uh, it means that the network team doesn't need to, you know, console onto a switch, copy and paste a, a configuration onto it. Uh, our, network, our, our data center team just plugs it in and it pretty much builds itself. So, so the guy's so playing cards now? Yeah, I mean, pretty much. Basically, you know. So I mean, what are they doing now? I mean, I'm so cards. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the data center team, the data center team still has the tough job of racking and stacking. But um, once they tell us it's ready, we just um, we just sit back and, and watch it build. So what used to take us uh, two days can be done now in in minutes, five ten minutes. Really, it's 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 really amazing. It's yeah. great stuff. So, so Luca, can you can you kind of sketch out for us a little bit about your network? You know how big it is, how many people you have, and, sure. and what is that gro growth portfolio? How often are you adding switches? Right. How often are you adding data centers? You know, wh wh how does that look like? So uh, in terms of data centers, we've got eleven now. Um, our most recent one was in uh, Toronto, which we opened about a month ago. Uh, it's the second one we've opened this year. Frankfurt was before that. The previous year we've opened, uh, I think we opened three data centers. So typically we're opening three to four. We've got three planned for next year. So our data center footprint is getting bigger. Uh, in terms of customers, we've got hundreds of thousands of customers. Um, we started in, in 2012 with just a few thousand, uh, hosting a few thousand droplets, and now we're hosting hundreds of thousands of droplets. Uh, if you look at our growth pattern um, on, a, on, on uh, Netcraft, it's is a company that tracks this type of stuff, and you can just see it just sort of start really slowly and then pretty much just hockey stick straight up. So we're actually the, going by Netcraft's rankings, we're the second biggest hosting provider in the world, uh, and we've done that in, in three years, so it, it's been amazing. So, so look, uh, storage and networks are the two things that have typically in, in the past held us back because, yeah. you know, I got to bring gear in, I either need capacity or I need ports. Uh, the message of Juniper has been, you know, uh, obviously, you know, you need another box, somebody's got to bring that in and plug it in, but yeah. other than that, we should be able to take things that took, you know, weeks or months and boil that down to seconds or minutes. Uh, you, what's your experience been uh, and, uh, you know, what, what, what solutions are you using from Juniper and how does that, you know, speed up your activities? So we, from Juniper, we typically purchase uh, a whole bunch of switches at once. We, we, when we build a new data center, we, we have an idea of um, what we need before we start. So we typically build out, uh, say, 12 racks. Um, we're using uh, QFX switches at the top of rack. We, we build a pretty simple uh, spine and leaf topology um, using all Juniper gear. We, we have uh, EXs in the cores and uh, MXs up at the edge. Um, and with that initial build out of 12 racks, we can support 
few hundred thousand VMs uh, in that. So we, we track the numbers fairly carefully, and when we see we're getting to around 50% uh, capacity, um, we sort of have a shopping list of stuff we need, and we just go off to our Juniper reps and say, just you know, send us all this stuff again, and and we'll we'll start again. So it's a it's a pretty seamless process for us are, these days. Are, uh, are you using the Contrail solution also? So Contrail is a thing that we have evaluated heavily. We do have a uh, SDN project which is kicking off uh, right now. Really, uh, Contrail is very interesting. So it's it's something that we are definitely looking at. Um, uh, okay, so, so I guess what's, what's moving you towards SDN? What are some of the key things that you're looking at? What's it going to transform to for your business? So for us, the, the um, key driver for SDN is just the features that it provides. So uh, because we've grown so quickly, some of the features that um, are needed are sort of almost lacking from our cloud. Um, we've just released floating IP, which is, which is a, a great new feature, and it's, it's actually hugely popular already. Um, but an SDN solution will also enable us to sort of redesign our network. So typically we've we've had a pretty big uh, layer two network, which most people know is, is not a great way of doing things. Uh, something like Contrail will allow us to do uh, layer three down to the top of rack and let the hypervisors pretty much take care of, of everything else uh, by building an overlay across the, the physical network, which, which we'll manage. So um, it's really exciting. Okay, and is security part of the discussion uh, for, for making a change when you go to SDN? Security is is, a, is a definitely a, um, a topic of interest. So um, we want to start be, being able to do things like virtual private clouds for customers, which is obviously a, um, a hindrance to people who need a, well, it's a hindrance to not have that um, product for customers who need that type of security. Um, so yeah, we're, we're always looking at all, all the things we can improve on. Look, I want to get your, your take on some of the messaging that Juniper's talking about. It in the switch is certainly the 5200. They're talking about an instant evolution. And, which is cool, I like the marketing. It's, it's got a good good, good ring to it. But you're an interesting um, situation with DigitalOcean. Mm -hmm. You're growing really fast, congratulations. But you're also building out at the same time you're re-architecting yep. and positioning for that next level of inflection, <laughs> whether it's going to go straight up or however the hockey stick will shape, whatever, right. the, whatever the trajectory is. Yeah. What do you guys look for? I mean, do you think it's an instant evolution? And what, are you, what do you need right now? Because to continue that growth, it's challenging, right? You've got to do a lot of, you're, you're building out in real time. Yeah. So what is the, the thing about the 5200 that gets your attention? Is it the density? Is it the, is it yeah. the latency? The thing that drove us to the whole QFX range to start with, and, and the 5100 was uh, 40 gig ports. So, so we're building 40 gig down to the hypervisor now. Uh, and the 5100 was a, a, a 24 port, 40 gig switch, uh, expandable to 32 gig, uh, 32 ports with some, um, with some expansion modules. Uh, it's great to see that the 5200 is now just a, a fixed form, 32 gig, 40, 40, 40 32 port, 40 gig <laughs> switch. It's a, it's a tongue twister. <laughs> it's a tongue twister. Um, and then even even getting uh, more more 40 gig ports, I think a uh, 64 port is what it goes to as well now. So, so that basically just means that you can cram more servers into a rack. You can have more spines, more more leaf switches, and it means basically you need less hardware to do the same job that you did with. Um, Previous models. What about analytics? Um, obviously, Internet of Things. You're in. Yeah. You're in the. You're in the engine room. I mean, network is the engine room of the future. So, yeah. what are you guys doing with that analytics? Obviously, you need to get some data out of there. Yeah. So, analytics is something that we are very, very interested in because uh, we don't have a lot of it right now. We pull most of our most of our data from uh, the, the hypervisor. Um, so, and that's something where Contrail is really good with analytics as well. So, we're, we're really excited to be able to start you know, seeing more about what's going on uh, in our network, because actually right now it's sort of, it is lacking a little bit. Um, so any new features that enable that to be easier and, and more um, easily found is, is great. And yeah, we'll definitely get into that uh, in the next few months. Uh, it's just hard when you're, um, when you're scaling so quickly. Some, <laughs> of these, some of these are nice to have features sort of just have to wait. It's until growing you pains. Have the time. You know, you yeah. gotta just wait till you grow into it, right? I definitely, mean, definitely. But it's good headroom for you guys. Yes, and now that we've got um, our, you know, our company has grown significantly in terms of staff members, we've got people now that have the time to look at this type of stuff. So you'll definitely see. Nobody's playing cards at DigitalOcean. No, you wish. So. <laughs> <laughs> we actually had a poker night a few weeks ago, but that was uh, that was more of a reward. That was outside <laughs> of business hours. Yeah. 
So, L Luca, uh, you guys work with a lot of developers as your customers. C can you talk a little bit about kind of the developer culture, how yeah. it is working with Juniper? Uh, you know, see things like, uh, you know, you guys are mentioned at DockerCon, I know you, you said you send some people there. Yeah. Um, you know, how much are your customers pushing you? How much are you pushing Juniper? And, you know, wh wh what do you see changing, uh, yeah. you know, in the networking space? So, I mean, we're the cloud built by developers for developers. That's yeah. our, I think it's on the front page <laughs> of our website. Um, we. We're big in the developer industry because people like you know the five dollar droplet. It's it's cheap, it's fast performing, and it's it's a really good product. Um, we have a, a great team of software engineers who are really involved in the community. Um, we have a community team who's really involved in in all the different events. We host events at our office, so um, yeah, the developer community is, is something that is is very important to DigitalOcean and something that we will continue to you know grow and, and keep going with. Um, in terms of, um, you know, from a networking perspective, uh, you know, DevOps or NetDev is something that is, is becoming more and more important for network engineers. So I know in, in, in the network engineering team, uh, almost all of us can, can write some type of code, be it Python or, or whatever else. Um, we've got um, network developers who actually work in the networking team now who are building internal tools for the network team and, and helping us with our automation. Um, and I think as we get more and more into uh, our SDN strategy, we're going to start pushing um, things like Contrail or, or what it, what it, whatever it might be to to kind of cater for our needs more and more. Yeah. What, what, one of the more interesting things in the keynote is, uh, you know, Juniper talked about how they have a strong software heritage, mm -hmm. but they don't yet run a software business. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and you know, if I, you think traditionally on budgets, it's like, all right, you know, I mean, you might not have, you know, yearly, but you know, kind of regularly. Okay, here's my network budget. This is what I have to spend. Uh, what, what's your mindset internally about, you know, purchasing more? I mean, the cloud model is usually more on demand. Yeah. Can you guys see that shift of moving from buying boxes to, you know, disaggregating hardware, software? You know, wh 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 where's, wh where's your thoughts internally about that? That's an interesting question. Um, I honestly hadn't thought about it too much and, and before, I, before I got here. Um, we're always going to need hardware. It's just the nature of being an infrastructure as a service <laughs> company. <laughs> um, <laughs> if we can buy hardware that we can start to run, maybe run our own software on, um, then I can see the benefits of that as well. You know, white box switching is becoming more and more popular over the past few, well, the past few months, I guess. Um, there's a lot of companies who are doing this type of stuff now, and it's great to see Juniper sort of taking that leap into the whole uh, DevOps thing. So it's hard to say. I, I see it becoming more and more prevalent. Um, what it means for the networking team at D DO, I, I'm not really sure yet. We're just focused on, you know, making sure we're getting to where our customers need to be and, and keeping everything stable right now. Yes, yeah, so wi with your services, you know, one of the biggest challenges must be kind of controlling costs and, and understanding this. Uh, can you talk a little bit about, you know, how networking fits into the costs? You know, how does Juniper help you? You know, wh yeah. why haven't you guys just gone kind of white box and uh, done some of those solutions? Uh, yeah, we, we evaluated some white box stuff a while ago. Um, the reason that we, the reason that we like Juniper is because, in my mind, Junos is, is by far the best network operating system uh, around the command line is, is so much better than anything else on the market. Um, we, the white box stuff, basically it's a whole, it's a whole nother skill set that we had to learn and the whole team was good at Juniper, we all liked Juniper, didn't really see a reason to change. Um, we have a, a great team of, of Juniper, um, uh, you know, uh, account reps and and uh, SMEs and um, we get, we, we buy a lot of stuff from them so we get some good deals. Uh, they're really on the point with getting us trial gear. With with the, we're evaluating like the QFX 10K. Um, so we have a really good relationship with Juniper, and you know, didn't really want to change things. It's it's just easy. Look, I got to ask you about DevOps because that's what we've been covering that for a long time. You know, in the you know early days of cloud, you know, go back to 2009. Really, cloud was starting to really that DevOps culture started to really grow. Okay. Um, now it's mainstream, right? So, what is DevOps to you guys and your customers? Because you see Docker being very successful with containers. Yeah. You start to see now a new development model where infrastructure as code is really important to the yeah. developers. They want to they want to program the infrastructure. They don't want to get in the weeds on configuration management, all the provisioning stuff that goes on. Yeah. That quite frankly you're enabling. So talk about the dynamic right now. Give us a snapshot of what's happening in DevOps. Uh, to me it's just <laughs> it's just everyone being able to write some form of code, whether it's a script to make a config change on a switch or it's actually 
you know, developing some type of application. Uh, and you're seeing that the more people that are able to, to write code and come up with their own software, it just makes the world, makes the, the, the IT world at least, a, a better place to work in because there's all these new ideas, all these new applications that just make life easier for everyone. So it's interesting from a networking perspective because network engineers typically haven't been people who have, who have written code or who have developed stuff, and that's shifting now. So um, I think in the, next, in the next year, you'll start to see more people talking about, well, from a networking perspective, people talking about net dev or, or network developers. Um, and they're closer to the action too. I mean, go back yeah. a decade or so ago, there were guys who do their job and they'd be playing cards and having beers on, you know, at, the, you know, at, the, at the pubs. But now they're so close to the action there and they actually can see the enablement. Yeah. What's the coolest thing that you've seen uh, at DigitalOcean that's happened above you that you guys have enabled that you go, wow, I, that blew me away, mind yeah. blowing. The, the launch of uh, uh, our floating IP address um, product, which was, I think, two weeks ago, uh, was probably some of the coolest stuff that, that we've done as, as a company. Um, it's enabled customers to now have a, you know, an IP address that floats between two, two or more droplets, um, and it's, it's high availability features which were lacking from our cloud. So that was a big effort by our software uh, engineering team, and um, they had to rewrite a whole bunch of code and and do a whole bunch of stuff that I don't understand, but <laughs> it, um, it, uh, it was really exciting. We, we had a big launch party and it was, it was great. Luca, thanks for coming on theCUBE and sharing your insights and some of that data. You are pretty much the poster child at, at DigitalOcean of what customers are probably going to go through as they get into this new transformation with the modern er era of infrastructure. So thanks. congratulations on your success. Thank you. Fastest growing cloud, second, second uh, biggest hosting provider, growing like a rocket ship, hockey stick growth. We'll be back more here at the Juniper Customer Event next work. We'll be right back after this short break.